if you if you just joined in no worries thank you for coming through and uh you know i think i think we can definitely start right now um we're we're, we're all fans of each other right now cool okay you know what officially um i'm gonna be starting right now so it's all good um Assalamu alaikum, everybody, which means peace be upon you. Uh, my name is Hassan Dinawi. Uh, people call me Big Hass. Uh, I'm a human being that believes in good, authentic art and vibe. I am from Saudi Arabia, um, a blue-eyed Saudi Arabian. Um, and I'm going to be your host, uh, obviously, tonight. We're doing this exciting talk tonight about street art with three dear, incredible artists uh, that I'm sure you guys know. Uh, we got Dusty from Bahrain, give him a big salute. And we got El Cid, French Tunisian, and Da Cruz uh, from France. These guys are amazing. But before I, you know, talk more and introduce each and every one of them, um, I would really, really, really want to say thank you uh, to, to, to the following because they made this happen. So we have um, Alliance Française of Bahrain. We got Alliance uh, Francaise uh, of Saudi Arabia, as well as the French Institute in Abu Dhabi and the Alliance of Francaise Abu Dhabi and the Alliance um, Francaise Dubai for organizing such a su such such a talk. I really hope I said the Alliance thing right because I was <laughs> practicing the whole day. But yeah, um, amazing. Um, Alliance Francaise and French Institute are. Um, they do this all over the world to build bridges between the French culture and the host country, of course. They organize different types of events all along the year and also provide French classes, which I think I'm going to be taking hopefully soon. Um, so if you're interested in getting to know more about these activities, feel free to follow them on social media or check out where the closest Alliance Francaise or French institution is, loca institution is located uh, near you. And definitely please, please give them a visit because they do a lot of work for for the culture um okay let me introduce my guest today and our guest dusty dusty dust um is a bahraini artist um uh, he is the guy who's raising his hand right now he's at the top left of the, at least my screen yes peace and love this guy is massive you guys uh, incredible guy he's been he's been in the art scene for i think 15 years plus he's the founder of the red um ants army team now, whether it's dance, music, uh, wall painting, production, um, Dusty is, is definitely highly respected in the GCC, in the Gulf region specifically, and on the global hip hop scene for putting Bahrain on the map uh, as, 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 as hip hop culture. For me, he is somebody very important. I'm a big fan of him. So thank you so much, Dusty, for joining us today. Um, massive Pleasure fan. to be here with you. Our pleasure. Uh, and then we got El Cid. Uh, El Cid is a French Tunisian uh, artist. Uh, he's right there. Raise your hand, El Cid, right here. Yes, uh, the peace sign. Incredible guy. Uh, definitely one of our heroes. When I say our heroes, as 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 Arabs, as people who uh, who have a lot of um, stereotypical, you know, things said about them, he is really representing uh, us in an incredible way. Um, he uses Arabic calligraphy and a distinctive style to spread message of peace, unity, and just underline uh, the, 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 you know, us as a human first, uh, the human existence. His artwork can be found all over the world, um, and it aims to kind of unify communities um, and, and break stereotypes. El Cid, salam, good to have you. Salam, thanks, bro. Thank you. My brother. Um, again, uh, you can follow these artists. Uh, there's uh, the, the Culture of France. They, sh they, sh they just also posted their accounts. Please do that. And last but not least, of course, uh, a legend. De Cruz is a French artist. He started painting on the walls of uh, Ourc. Am I saying it right, De Cruz? That's it. <clears throat> That's a, a neighborhood in <clears throat> yeah. Paris, 19th. Perfect. Perfect. Mashallah. You started in 2004 and quite quickly kind of, you know, it became the style work became the identity of the neighborhood. This is massive. Um, just the numerous uh, trips to South America and particular to Brazil, Africa uh, or even Palestine are a source uh, of creativity for the crews. Um, you have a you have a, you have an amazing way. And I think for for you, the artwork is a place for exchanges and collaboration between artists, specifically in, 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 in Urk, um, but also a struggle against the changes that are gradually becoming, they became more visible. Um, and it's just very, very authentic. So uh, the Cruz, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. Um, yeah, and that's it, you guys. We're going to get into it right now. And again, shout out to everybody. Please prepare your questions and we'll definitely get into that. Um, 
And and I am Hus or Big Hus. I am I host the Saudi's first FM hip hop radio show, and I love hip hop culture. Um, I love basketball, and uh, I just want to say quickly that uh, autism is not a disease. I have a son; he's my hero, Ahmed, and uh, I always say it. And it doesn't matter if we're talking hip hop, science, or calligraphy. I'm always going to say this. So thank you so much for giving me that platform to be uh, obviously your host today. Um, I'm going to start with this question. It's a little bit, uh, it, you know, we were discussing it and I, I think it's very interesting. And I'm going to go throughout, you know, we'll start with you, Dusty. Um, is street art uh, temporary art by its definition or should we keep this art as part of the history um, of a society? Mm. Well, I think uh, the word street art, like, you know, came to be like very recent, but it's been there for like years and years, you know, like back in the 50s, they used to paint like advertisements, you know, like Coca-Cola, but it's all painting. Mm. So that to me considered like street art because it's like outside, you know, you can see it like on the buildings. So street art been there for years, you know, like I don't think it's going to be temporary. I think it's always going to be there like for years to come. So I think you're, you're, you're very, you know, very determined with your answer. Yes. With, with El Cid, what, what do you think? Like when, when we talk about being temporary or should we keep it as part of the history? I, I followed this, you know, what he said. I think, you know, uh, if you look at street art as the way people describe it today, like painting in the street. I think this is one of the longest uh, art movement in the art history. But uh, me, I believe that uh, street art, as we look at it today, we talk about it today, is ephemeral by essence. You know, like I, me as an artist, I don't, I, I create peace with the idea that the peace will disappear tomorrow. You know, like I used back in the days to fight to make sure like it will be preserved, but you know, like nobody on the street, you know what I mean? So as soon as you put it in the street, it belongs to the public. So yeah. if you disappear, like it's fine, you know, that's how I look at it. I mean, that's very interesting. Um, yeah, I want to talk to you about that, LC, in a second. But the Cruz, I would love to get your opinion as well um, regarding that topic. Uh, <clears throat> I think we, we need both. Uh, we need like things like uh, a piece of art in the, in the public space is like a butterfly. Uh, it, it only lives for a few days. But specifically, <clears throat> when I was talking about this neighborhood I'm living and I love, I tried to have uh, different types of living from the, 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 the art space in the space. So I think we need different kind of living of the, 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 the kind of art in the space. Mm. Yeah, no, I, I, I totally get that. I think that is, uh, I think that's very interesting. Uh, going back to all of you guys, how is it as an artist, um, you do work, you get, you know, you, 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 you spend time, energy on this work. And, and LC, you said it's, it's to the people. How difficult or easy to have you reach that? Because, you know, I know people that they're, they're, they're so much attached to the artwork. It's mine. But, but maybe for you guys, as, 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 as people have been doing incredible work, how did that kind of feeling get to you, LC? Me, honestly, like I said, like uh, at the beginning, you know, like if you paint a piece in the street and somebody paint over you, you know, uh, of course, you know, you used to get mad and you used to have this kind of beef, you know, but uh, I think I learned with time, you know, there's sometimes stuff that you cannot beat, you know, like when you paint in the middle of the desert in Tunisia, you cannot beat the, the sun, you know, and the heat. So, uh, so like I said, I think there's only one way for me, like the way to immortalize it is the picture. That's why documenting the artwork is really really important you know and i think like there is a lot like more and more artists do that and that's mm. important you know for the next generation like for maybe in one uh, 100 years you know because there's some pieces that are so relevant so important and people might come and paint over it like the next day you know and yeah and that's why documenting is very important i think but, but, uh, dusty do you feel the same way like as lc yeah like yeah absolutely like with graffiti it's known like if you paint, maybe after five minutes, maybe after five years, like you never know, like when your piece is gonna disappear, you know. Mm. So with the idea of having like your piece out there, you already know, like it's gonna go, you know. So it goes back to the monks, 
you know, when they do art with the sand. Yeah. Like they spend hours doing that. At the end, they just, you know, remove it and start again. So yeah. that concept uh, of, you know, knowing that your piece is not going to last, but you, you just, just love the process of doing it, you know. The process. Uh, yeah, that, that's very, very. De Cruz, what about you? Like, you know, you know, in terms of like, you know, creating that impact. Um, do you feel the same way as the guys as well? Yeah, I, I can hear, hear what said uh, El Cid when you, you cannot fight against the nature. But I have another question is, uh, for example, when you make like a big sculpture in concrete or something, is for me, it's like naturally connected with the, the, the work of the street art, but it's not anymore the same, but you, you're going to stay longer in the public space. So... Mm. That's the way I was talking about. We need both. We need something to let it go. And we need something to, at the same time, uh, being something who can unify the people, for example, on the street. Mm -hmm. uh, when it stays for years, uh, it, it, it allowed people to make their own. So I think that's something very useful for the people and, and specifically in the public space. And uh, because for me, talking about graffiti, street art, that, that kind of culture, we're talking about popular culture. For example, I come from, I think like Elsie, like dust from uh, popular neighborhoods. So uh, putting uh, culture in the streets, it's also uh, make them like visible for people who never went to a, a museum, for example. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very important to stay at last few years for the kids to be like something they can understand with the time because sometimes people don't understand in the right moment. For yeah. some people, they need mm -hmm. like few years and so on. So I think we need uh, both. Fact. No, and I, I think I think yeah. talking to you guys uh, and you, you you answering this way, um, I, I see I see Mr. Q. I call him Mr. Q. Quentin, um, you know him and um, Mel. I again I can't pronounce the whole name. Uh, Mel, uh, he's he's the photographer. They've done an amazing uh, book series. You guys, it's called the Khaliji Voice Book. Uh, just massive, really. The the series is very important and unique. They traveled together for. Um, I believe it was in 2015, um, and they traveled, uh, you know, between Bahrain, Saudi, UAE, Kuwait, Qatar, and Oman, and kind of documented uh, the whole thing. And I want to thank you, uh, Mr. Q, for arranging, you know, of course, this, me being here today. And I see some questions already. We'll definitely ask these guys um, you know, the questions. And um, Maryam, Maryam, uh, Maryam is saying uh, to you, El Cid, I'm still crying that your art in Egypt is disappearing. Um, El Cid, I, I don't think it will ever disappear from people's heart. We have it. We're going to talk about that incredible piece of history. Uh, but what you did there was really just uh, incredible. Um, you, you guys, man, wow, great answers. Okay, um, let's go shift it up to another direction. And I think this was a very, very interesting topic to talk about. Um, is it relevant that those street artworks enter an art gallery, but by changing location, does it also change its nature does it lose um the freedom i'll go with you lc with this one you know um i feel uh, i feel that uh only people you know who start with graffiti like when you start painting in the street uh people want you all your life to be painting in the street <laughs> they don't want you to uh you know as soon as you start doing sculpture as soon as you start doing something else or work on canva in the studio they say ah be, but this is not street art you know what i mean and I feel like people try to, um, I really feel it for us, you know, and I'm sure like the still like, you, uh, you know, like they, they put you in a box and say, okay, this is your area of, uh, of competitive you know, skills. You can only do this, you know, and you can paint in the street. You can do like, you can be like a, a vandal graffiti artist in the, in the Metro of Paris and still sell in canvases because your practice is not limited to only one field. You have the right to go somewhere else, you know, we have artists who do one mm. day uh, art installation, the next day they do uh, oil painting, but nobody say anything, you know? And uh, and we are still the same artists having different practice in different mediums, you know? You paint in the street because you love, maybe me personally, I love the interaction with people, but walls don't pay the bills, you know? And sometimes you have to sell canvas and 
and show that you can also be in different medium. And, uh, and that's how I look at it. I love that. I love your answer. The Cruz, what about you? I'm talking about the freedom of it. Does it does putting the certain art piece make it lose its nature or like the vibe or the freedom of this piece? No, no, I, I agree a hundred percent what uh, what said uh, exactly I'll see. It's a typical question. We have I'm 44 year, uh, years old, so it makes maybe 30 years I'm eating this kind of question. <laughs> and that's true what said uh, LC. A lot of people just, just want us to stay in the same box. And it's like uh, some, something very romantic. You start in the street, you must stay in the street. And I say, uh, it doesn't pay the bills. And, and uh, as artists, we have like many ways to develop our, our own uh, production thinking and so on. And it's like something very romantic, like, uh, you know, Van Gogh, like he, he, he died like he, he cut his ear. He died like uh, 33 years old, like very romantic, like he's the artist for his whole life. It's like Jim, Jimmy Morrison, something like that. Mm. If you start in a way, like in a rebel way in the street, you, you must stay the same. That's not exactly what I'm thinking nowadays. Um, talking about this kind of freedom uh, as a seed, as dust, we, we still working on different canvas, medium, mm. and we need that because uh, it's some like, uh, that, that kind of food we need for our souls to get something new. And uh, as said, uh, El Cid, uh, there's new generations who still be like, uh, representing in the streets and Fact. breaking the, the, the rules. But we, uh, for myself, I need both. I need a, a, a foot on the street, a foot on my studio. Wow. Uh, well, I never really thought about it this way. Uh, Dusty, what about you? I mean, I, can, I couldn't agree more with what they said, you know. I'm trying to find I a mean, beef with them, art. you guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm to have them disagree. <laughs> what, one second. It's going to happen. One question. I mean, I, I can't disagree <laughs> no, to, okay. to that because, uh, because as an artist, you need to develop your art, you know. So you have to try new mediums. Mm. You know, you can't just paint on walls every day. You need to try canvas. You need even like with the digital art, you know, like. Now you have a new uh, way of selling mm. art with NFTs, you know, like you can do like a moving oh, canvas. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's just developing every day, you know, I don't think there is a limit to it. I it's think, I think if you, it, listening to you guys talk about it, it feels like it's one thing. I think it's also um, this whole thing about putting people in a box. I love what you said, LC. I'm not a big fan of that at all. The, the, I don't think there's right one right way to do things generally. And I think this is where it's coming from. I think it's coming from the, the whole thing that we're comfortable with it. Halas, it has to be in, in the street. It's a street thing or whatever it is. So uh, I don't know. I really don't think it will lose its, uh, you know, I don't think it will lose. I, and, and on the contrary, I don't know where this perception came from. But uh, thank you for, for answering this, you guys. And I just want to say that I'm loving the interaction. We already have a lot of questions. And I just want to shout you guys out. All the questions hopefully will be answered by, um, you know, by towards the end um, of, of these conversations. Um, are you guys having a good time? Just checking with you guys, Elsie, Dusty. Okay, so yeah. oh. Sorry, go ahead. No, good. Yeah, I would like to add something, uh, Hassan, you know. Uh, it's sure. also on the, on the title. You know, I'm sure like uh, we, we, we feel it the same way, uh, Dust and, and, and Da Cruz. Uh, you have like street artists and then you have contemporary artist you know but we living today you know we're alive so we're contemporary you know what i mean and i feel like there is always that so you actually because you didn't follow i would say like the academic way of painting because you autodidact because you started from the street we cannot put you in this box you know what i mean so there's wow. also the term like the way you know you you have like people who started in the street and then like they you know they they're like in the most amazing museum around the world the part of the biggest collection you know, it, around the world, but still people, they try to, I, it's not, an, I, it's a street art, you know, like I feel even the fact of adding street, you know, it's trying to, uh, uh, you know, but, I don't deny where I come from, you know, I know my background and this brought me where I am today, but sometimes you're like, hey guys, you know, like, uh, why, uh, me, honestly, I really feel it sometimes when 
because I paint in Arabic and people, they add me this calligraphy thing that I'm trying to get out of it. Sometimes <laughs> just, just call me an artist. I love it. You know, like I see that cool, like this beautiful sculpture behind him. You know, if somebody yeah. never heard about street art, it's like, okay, this guy is a sculpture. You know what I mean? And that's, <laughs> that's, I think we have to reshape the way people think. Wow. I love that you said that because, you know, as a fan of hip hop, specifically rap, I, we, we face a lot of that as well. Um, you know, whether it's the new school vibe or old school vibe. Um, yeah. Quickly, just before I go on to my next question, the Cruz and, and, and Dusty and LC, how do you get out of the box? You just said it right there. Is there a certain way that you guys can do to get out outside a certain box? Do you find it difficult to get out of that box? For example, quickly, like an artist got famous because, you know, he did a, or she did a cover um, and then they got famous for covers. And, and now they're known to be cover artists. Once they drop their original song, no one really cares because they're put into the cover artist. How, maybe if anyone is listening, is there a way to get out of that, the cruise? Sorry, just before answering, I have to say, you looking so much to our friend from New York, T-Kid, which is one of Godfather of... <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. yeah, all right, let's you know, go. <laughs> no, that's, that's crazy. You, you look at so much, you look like him. That's amazing. We'll take a picture, send it to him. Look, yeah. look, look in, in, uh, on the internet, T-Kid. will. Like, T-Kid, okay. I'm definitely yeah. checking him out. Legend. Okay. Uh, wow. Tiki Legend is like a, like a scene of this kind of, uh, like the, the first one, Generations of New York. You look like so much. What? Yo, is, is he right, Dusty? Yeah. No. I <laughs> yeah, see. yeah. Subway, Subway, he used to write on Subway. So you look like. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I love that, you know? Amazing. Um, but go, going back to, to my questions in terms of like getting yeah. out of the box, the cruise, do you, I, do you find yourself kind of competing with that as well, battling with that? Uh, to totally. We, that's a kind of struggle because I think also, uh, as say the LC, uh, we come from streets. We, we did our work by ourselves. We're not coming from a school of, um, I don't know, I would say it's kind of class also. Mm -hmm. We're talking about that, the, this kind of reality. We come, we come from something come from street so in in a way that's something like very for the contemporary art some for some people it's cheap we can say the words you know what i mean yeah unfortunately that's 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 a reality yeah. and i think yeah every day uh, as we're talking uh, we have to struggle if in the way for the for some people to really understand it's not because it comes from the street it's a low art oh, you know yeah. i i think i think that narrative is definitely changing in everything like even when it comes to hip-hop by the way just quickly fyi arabic rap right now is on a really really high note and i've been supporting arabic hip-hop since 2006 and i see it evolve to a level where and guess what it started from the streets So now it's at a high demand. People I are believe investing. in that. I, I, I 100 percent believe in that. And I, unfortunately, some people only understand, like, uh, you know, prices of some things. Mm. Let's talk about this kind of reality. The art market wow. only consider uh, uh, art from the street since Banksy start selling like uh, pieces from $1 million dollar. Okay, this kind of people, I, I'm, I, I know, I, I believe everyone understand what kind of people I'm talking about. Gotcha. And, and they only consider like uh, something who becomes, okay, we can, we can now understand that, okay, the price of the some things, banks and so on, the price of, okay, in, in art markets, okay. Now we start, we're talking about real things. Mm. Uh, I mean, that's, that's very interesting. Dusty, what do you think of this in terms of getting out of the, getting outside a box? Do you feel that you're in a box, first of all, like as Dusty? Um, uh, absolutely. Um, I like I'm known as a B-boy, you know? Yeah. So for I me mean, to, that's make, how I knew you. to make music. Yeah, so exactly. So 
for me, like making music, making art, painting, it's all like a secondary thing that people views of me, you know? It's always the B-boy. But I'm not just a B-boy, you know? Like, I'm, I'm just an artist. Love that. Like, I paint, I make music, you know? So crazy I can music, be in a box, you guys. really. His production is crazy. I mean, it's massive. Thank, thank you, man. Thank um, you. mashallah, going back to you, you, you provoked this answer, this question. It's... Uh, the, the, do you really feel that you put as a, in in a box with after everything that you've done across your career, you're still put in a box till now? Yeah, I feel it. I, I, it's funny, you know, like when you you read it on the, for example, if there's an article that's written, like sometimes, like now, like especially with my team, we're like, okay, we're just gonna send a protocol of communication. This is the word you cannot use when you describe my work, you know. Mm. And, and yes, really, yes. people they want to add, you know, and uh, and I think sometimes it's good for the story. You know, like the term calligraphy, like I read so much stuff about it and like people say, ah, LC created, I'm like, this is not me. Like in the 70s, people are talking about that. And I, even if I say it, wow. like people keep writing it, you know, and, uh, and wow. this is sometimes it's annoying because, so like I said, I think it's, uh, uh, it's the way you communicate, you know, like sometimes I feel like you need to show maybe a different, uh, different, uh, medium. So people of course, I, I know, love so that like, you uh, said Man, I love that you said that. This is just remarkable so far. I'm already benefiting a lot. But you guys, keep your questions coming. We're going to be, you know, I, I see your questions. You guys, thank you so much for all of you guys and coming through. I, I still have a couple more questions and we're going to show some, uh, some artworks. Um, okay, uh, this is very, very important to me to know. Now, is there more acceptance of street art in, in, in Europe than the GCC, like Gulf countries? Um, Dusty, I'm going to start with you. We, we know how it is in the, in, you know, I, I host Saudi's first FM hip hop radio show. When I hosted the show 10 years ago, by the way, I'm celebrating 10 years uh, this end of June. Amazing. Um, my first episode, I got called an infidel as a first message mm. because like, why are you bringing in a, an American culture, you know, putting it on us? And then now I'm getting, thank you for educating me about hip hop. Thank you for, you know, supporting Arabic rap and all that. Now, in, in what way, I'm talking about the acceptance. In what way, for example, where you're from in Bahrain, it, does the acceptance play a role? Like, is it improving right now? Is it much better than before? Tell me about that experience. It's definitely better than before since we started like getting, you know, like let's say spray cans. You know, by, back in the days we had like very cheap spray cans. Now we have a good shop with <laughs> professional spray paint, you know, like, so actually we are, improving in that sense of like people are seeing that this is really an art and it has its own product it has its own you know elements well, well dusty what do you think what do you think made the noise right here what do you think made the break is it your work in terms of like halas and nasta awadu meaning people got accustomed to seeing that in the streets i mean i tried my best to put like graffiti out in the street just for people to see that you know there is something there is a movement you know Someone is doing something, you know. So my message yeah, but, was like But again, that. with you specifically, I know that in Saudi Arabia, when people see graffiti, for example, they would say it's like, what is this? It's nonsense. It's vandalism or whatever it is. Like, I don't understand yeah. it. And people don't realize it. So it's interesting that you say the acceptance is getting better right now. Yeah, absolutely. Like, even like if you go to like a coffee shop or you go to the mall, you can actually see like some art there that represent, you know, like graffiti or street art. Yeah. So there is an acceptance. Yeah. El Cid, with you, 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 you've done work all over the world. In what way is it kind of, you know, um, between the GCC and Europe, the acceptance-wise? Um, you, you know, like there is a, like for a lot of people, you know, when you, you speak about graffiti in the, in, in the Arab world, it looks like it, uh, it started after the revolution. But, uh, you know, if you look historically, you have people like, for example, in Palestine since the 60s, you know, were painting on walls with spray can. You know what I mean? There's a beautiful book made by this Swedish uh, photographer called Gaza Graffiti, where you see people like painting yeah. in the street with spray can. Then like they were trained, like they used to train kids like for almost like three, four years until they do like perfect outline, you know, and then they used to go on the street to either like paint political message or like message for the majority of the world. And some guys, they used to ask, you know, like uh, do a proposal like for their wife on the wall like they you know like do you want to marry me on the wall so um oh, yeah, and, yeah. and this is you know it's uh 
it, it's when you speak about uh, street art and graffiti, it's always like it looks like this uh, culture that was that had been imported, you know, from from Europe and the US to the Arab world. You know what I mean? And uh, mm. and me, I look, I I painted in Tunisia like uh, in the late nineties, you know, and uh, that was that was not a real issue. And and like the thing is like the way people put it. In, I mean, I feel here in the mind of people. When you speak about graffiti, it's something that you have to do vandal. You know, like this is an illegal, illegal thing. This is a kind of politic protest. You know, when yes, uh, there's many ways of doing it. I mean, I had like years ago a clash with a guy on a on a talk like that because like uh, if if you paint in the street, it's not illegal. This is not uh, this is not graffiti. And I'm like, you know, like me when I'm in Tunisia, like anywhere around the world, I'm like, look, it's like 12 o'clock. I knock at somebody's door and it's like, look, I'm an artist. This is what I want to do. I love you all. Can I paint on it? And the guy's like, okay, please do it. And then so the guy gives you like free free lunch, you serve you tea and you paint and you know you make friends. So there's I think a, Facts. a, a yeah different perception. But uh, yeah, but uh, me painting now in Arabic in the, in uh, in Europe, uh, I actually like the funny thing is in France. I have, like a lot of problems painting like permanent pieces in France and like the struggling now to do this piece in uh, in the town, you know, where I grew up in the 92 district in France. And uh, because they always associate, they say, oh, we don't want to do commun- communitary uh, art. You know, I'm like, it's not because I paint in Arabic that I'm targeting Muslim people. You know what I mean? And yeah. I think there's I think, uh, an education. Yeah, but I think if you don't mind me saying, this is why your work is important as well. Like you're, the, you're, you're, you're you know, we're talking about doing this whole uh, webinar as a bridge. You, you're, you're, mashallah, a bridge on your own. So God protect you, man, El Cid. Um, the cruise, uh, I think, I think with you uh, come as well. You've you've been all over, and in terms of acceptance, uh, my question to you: What would you say um, to to somebody who does not accept, let's say, street work or graffiti? Someone from the GCC, let's say. What is it from you? What would you tell them? I I will tell them um, basically. In, in our world, the, uh, with the globalization, there, there's some good aspects also. That means, for me, uh, what's happening, not only in GCC, but, but all around the world, there are some places I've been uh, painting like 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And at that moment, I saw some young kids who were starting painting and so on. And... They, 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 at, at that moment, there are some problems to do that. Mm. And coming back by the years, meeting them, and we are connected in the internet, Instagram, and so on. I, I can see they, they make a lot of progress, but also, as Dust was saying, the material improved the quality and the perception of the people also. Because the people now, uh, everyone is like, connected uh, with the internet. Everyone wants to buy his Nike. Everyone wants to eat this. You know what I mean? That, I love the aspects yeah. of that. I love that, you, I love that you said that. Yeah. No, I love that you said if you, if you guys don't mind, I want to say, a, I want to share a quick story that happened with me. So obviously in the show, I, I, I talk about hip hop and hip hop is not only rap, it's a culture. Graffiti is a very important element of hip hop and DJing, of course, breaking and uh, rap and knowledge and all that. Um, so one time this kid from Mecca, I'm not sure if I told you this LC before, um, Mecca, um, he called me um, and he's like, Hus, my father does not allow me to do graffiti. I want to start practicing. I want to do like, you know, I, 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 he's not, he doesn't allow me. So I told him to listen to your show on the radio. I'm like, what? Whoa. Okay. Whoa. <laughs> All right. So the father started listening to my show on the radio for like three, four weeks. And then one time I got a call and it was like, hello, you know, big huss. And like, yes, yes. Uh, don't forget the H though. But anyway, okay, cool. <laughs> um, he's like, my son has been talking to me about you and I've been listening to the show and it changed my perception, which was what the, the cruise just said. And right now I am calling you to tell you that I bought a wall for my son. I made a wall outside my house and my son is practicing right now. So I want to say thank you. I was like, man, I'm, I felt so happy. I was like, wow, my radio, me talking about hip hop as a culture and how it is and how it elevates change that word person, you know, and he's still, he's trying to get better. Obviously he's been at it for a while right now, but you know, alhamdulillah. So 
uh, I really love what you guys said, man. Um, you know, this is just fantastic. And, uh, you know, I'm getting a lot of questions and I really, I really want to leave some time for, um, uh, you know, I, I, I do have a couple more questions, but if you guys don't mind, um, I want to go and share some of your artwork and then maybe jump in to, to the people's questions. We have some incredible questions from the people. So right now, what I'm going to do, you guys, I'm going to share my screen and, uh, and then I'll be able to uh, uh, talk about each and every uh, artist uh, artist's work. So uh, let me know if it's clear with you. I'm sharing it right now. Um, uh, are you guys okay? Thumbs up. Thumbs up, I guess. Cool. Thumbs up. Dusty, we're going to start with you. I'm just going to go over the some of the work, obviously. Uh, obviously, this is your tag in, in Arabic, Rubar, which means dust. How important is, is, is a tag, you know, for you? Like, and, and, and which one do you like use more, Arabic or English? Or how do you, how do you, tell me about that, this artwork. I mean, it all starts from a tag. And then Facts. you take the tag and you just add like 3D blocks, you know, shadow. And it becomes like a piece. And you just add more details to make it look like realistic. Mm. But I do write it both like Arabic and English because dust is four letters in yeah. both as well, like in Fact. Arabic. Yeah. And if you actually see, like if you can flip it, you can see that the half and ba looks like D and U. So it's kind of similar, which is crazy to me. You know? Wow. Like, I just noticed that. Yeah, that's yeah, incredible. So, so, is that yeah. deliberate? Like you made um, that? No, it, I mean, it looks like that. I yeah. don't know. Yeah, that's yeah. amazing. So I write both. Yeah, I write both Arabic and English. Mashallah, Alek. Uh, God bless you, man. Uh, you guys, you, you definitely go follow these artists. You know, their, their accounts is available. Um, okay, this one. T tell me about this one. Where, where was this done? This is uh, inside a mall. Wow. Which is, uh, okay. It was like opening. And uh, they asked like a uh, few artists from Bahrain if they can come and paint, you know, as a commission. And I just used a uh, few colors, you know. I just wanted to show like the outlines, you know, the beauty, mm. the, be the beauty of outlining and graffiti. So I didn't use a lot of colors, just few. Yeah, the outline. Yeah, mm. yeah, just the outlines. W yeah. What what sort of reaction you got from the people who commissioned you or the people generally? Um, I'm, I don't know, really. <laughs> Honestly. Yeah, no, yeah. that that looks. Yeah, I love that. I, yeah, man, I think, you know, Thank you. and this one is definitely one of my favorite for you. Uh, oh, thanks, man. Wh where is this? This is uh, in the street. Uh, yeah, in, I know. In Adliya. Adliya, and, uh, okay, okay. Yeah, cool. Adliya in Bahrain. Yeah, this is a, an abandoned house and like no one lives there and this wall is like next to a parking lot and i've been just eyeing this wall for so long you know <laughs> eyeing. <laughs> yeah. yeah and i just yeah. came one day and i painted this with wall paint and spray paint and every medium how long did it take you to to, to do this um two days if you're wow mashallah and and do you remember the year like that you've done this have you yeah faced this is uh, during lockdown 2020 wow Wow. Yeah. And is it still there or? Yeah, still there. How does that make you feel? You come back to it after a year and hey, my piece is still there. I mean, uh, if anyone want to go over it, they're going to have to spend a, a lot of money and paint, you know, because it's not this small. <laughs> uh, you made it hard. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. That's amazing. Um, all right, you guys, I, I want you to clap for Dusty because that's his last piece. So clap virtually. Okay, for Dusty. <laughs> um, okay, our second uh, superstar, De Cruz. Uh, first of all, let me just say that your work is so, so dope, my brother. You are, wow, just, yeah. Uh, I, we really want to be educated. T tell me about this, um, uh, this piece. The, basically, I, I, I just chose quickly a few pictures of uh, paints I did last month in, in basically in France because we could not travel as we used to. Mm. Uh, and I just choose this one about the, 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 the colors and the vibes. So it was very simple, but uh, it, it, it shows the connections I love to, to put in my work. It's like the human being. Yeah. We are all like remixed. We are all sticked. Uh, wow. we are 
or, or you, uh, human beings living in the same <clears throat> earth, but the street for me is like that. Like we, even if we don't choose, we have to live together. So happy. I love that you said that. You know, one of my favorite artists I met four four years ago. He's a legend, Chuck D from Public Enemy. Um, he has the song "Fight the Power," and uh, we were walking. Actually, I flew from Jeddah to Beirut just to meet him, and we were walking, and we started talking. And him, he's like, you know, when people ask me where I'm from, I always say I'm an Earthian. And I've been saying that I'm an Earthian. And people are like, what is that? Earthian from planet Earth. You know, you know, planet Earth. I'm from there. And I think it's really remarkable um, what you said uh, about yes, that. That is he's a big inspiration from the beginning. Wow. As you, have, as you, have, you ever, have you ever worked on his music? Like why, you, why you're listening to him? Like of, public course, enemy? of course, that's very interesting. Working on big pieces, uh, like you, when you have to work like days and days, you need like some motivation. So at, at some moments you, you need to put some special music with a lot of energy. So oh, yeah, yeah, of course, the uh, fight. Oh, yeah. Or, I mean, yeah, that's amazing. All that kind of uh, uh, early rappers yeah. is something very powerful. That, yeah. Know, yeah. The old school like Rakim, Big L, uh, yeah. De La Soul. Yeah, that was it. Tell, tell me about this one. Cause this is also like, wh wh where is this in Paris, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, in the uh, south of Paris, the 15th. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting because uh, it was like my, actually, it's my highest piece I, I did. Wow. It's 50 meters. 50? And, yeah, 50. it's uh, 16 uh, floors. And uh, it took me like three weeks. So it's for me the opportunity also to to be like living, talking with the people. I, I, I cannot like uh, go and paint in the street without being connected with the people the, for the good and the bad. That's reality. That's all that kind of experience I, I'm, I'm looking for. As, yeah. as my, my um, friend, just so I said, I think we also need this kind of food to, to, for, for that kind of inspiration. As we were talking about for example, the dif difference between walking in our studio and walking the street is also to have that kind of experience, good and bad. Wow. Yeah, e e yeah. wow. You, you just took me somewhere because I, I've had the pleasure to watch LC work twice and I've seen him work and uh, whether it's in Dubai or Jeddah. And yes, exactly. People, people are very important. Um, okay. Uh, where is this taken? Oh my God, mashallah, man. Like... Uh, uh, this one is specific is like in the neighbor the area of Paris is more it's an area a little more poor it's called Aubervilliers it's not far from from Aubervilliers. Paris mm. and it's a, a public uh, school wow for the kids. so I choose something more light like this mm. kind of energy for this kind of kids yeah. I see that. Do, 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 Cruz, quit, do, do you see? Do you think that people sometimes get not confused? Not that's not the word. I like they go like, "Hey, what's the difference between this and that?" And like, do you get these kind of uh, kind of reactions sometimes, or or no? That, that I, I'm gonna give you an example. I, I've been working on the Hamala in Palestine ten years ago. Yeah. I spent three uh, three weeks in the in the, I would say a camp for refugees camp. And at the beginning, when, when I was uh, painting this kind of portraits, they were like, well, what's the, the idea? And, and I tried to explain them that something who talks about the human being, I, I, I tell them that's the representation of something that's open. That's not something specific. I hear Everyone you. can see what he can feel. It's open. And... At the beginning, when I first start, they were not so, how do you say, so... Impressed? Impressed, or they were not so a big motivation about that. And little by little, they started like to understand that, okay, that's something new for them. Yeah. At the, at the end, I think they, they understood more. Yeah, I mean, the way you talked about it right now, I understood even more. So... Uh... Definitely. One more round of applause for legendary the Cruz right there. Thank you so much, sir. Um, El Cid, uh, 
you know, I th- I'll see it with you. I don't know, like Shahati Fik Majruha. That in English, I cannot translate you guys. Like the, 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 I, I cannot talk much more about you because your work has impacted me personally and, you know, changed me as a person. This one, we've all, we all know this one. Um, and I'm not going to ask you, what is it? <laughs> I think we all know what is it. I'll see it. I think I want to ask you, when you look at this right now, what's the first word that comes to your mind after all these years and after everything that this incredible campaign initiative went through? Uh, that's, I mean, one word is difficult. You know, I think I would say dream, dream, you know, like, uh, yeah. I think, yeah, because, uh, you know, you, you, you know, Wahid and uh, yeah. that was a conversation, you know, the, actually a few months before we did the project, uh, I told Wahid, I said, I want to do it. So I want to do, I say, I want to do it. So anybody who would see it, if we manage to make it, would be like, damn, I can do, I can make a dream happen. And that was actually nice. It was a dream to make it happen, but it was, I mean, deeper than that. Just like, uh, do, do, like do you still, remote. do you still talk in talks or in contact with the, with the people? Yeah, of, yeah. Of the all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually last week, <laughs> last week but you know, the, the funny thing last week, uh, Eid, one of our friends from Eid? the message me. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he told me. He Wasn't told he me the guy who got married or no? Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. In 2018, yeah, we went back. So yeah, for the past five years, we've been going back and forth. They call me. Honestly, at least every two weeks, there's somebody from the neighborhood who call me or me. I call them, and the and the the guy Eid came. He messaged me. He told me there is some people from Denmark. They came. And they were like, um, the guy who did this piece uh, is called Sofian. And they're like, no, I'm like the guy who did the piece, <laughs> his name is Fauzi, and his artist name is El Cid. And yeah, we were, you know, we yeah. were with him when we did it. And he's yeah. like, no, 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 the guy lied to you. This is not true. The guy is from Denmark. What? I'm like, what? <laughs> now, Yo, this is it's... the funniest. The funniest <laughs> message I ever like heard. Was <laughs> Yo, it's like they are the your your guards. They they are guarding this yeah. piece, man. It's amazing. Okay, yeah. so yeah. you guys, of course, uh, I'm about to see your 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 text messages and questions. Please uh, please prepare them. I'm about to jump to you. Your second piece, um, El Cid. Was this in Saudi Arabia? Yeah, that was uh, that was in Al Ula. Uh, Al Ula. Uh, yeah. How, yeah. You know, I haven't I haven't been there myself. How is it like? You know, it, you know. Did you like it? Yeah, I loved it. It was, uh, it was uh, actually it was amazing. Honestly, it was, uh, it was really uh, like the 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 place itself. You know, like I'm talking about the landscape is so, so crazy that you have to humble yourself. You know, like you have to wow. surrender actually to. Uh, I think you have to surrender to uh, to the environment. So what, the idea what, of this project was what, to. What, what does it say here? This one is a uh, you know like I think most of the people here they know Romeo and Juliet. You know, yeah. love story, but you know there was a love story that happened like six centuries before Romeo and Juliet, actually in South of Medina in El Ula, and uh, it was a story of this guy called Jamil, uh, who, who was in love from with this girl from uh, this other tribe called Busaina. So he kept writing poetry about her, and then the poetry got spread all around like Medina and El Ula in the region. And then when the guy who wanted to propose to this woman, like the dad, like you know, he took all this poetry as an as an insult, you know, for his tribe and for his daughter. So they never get married. And so the idea of this project was to create a, a sculpture that will be a, a kind of symbol of this wow. of this love that like a mirage, you know, that fade. Yeah. You know, so the wow. color of the sand, I mean, we try to find the same color of the sand to paint the sculpture and uh, and you can get inside it. So this, the piece is like 16, uh, 16 meter oh, diameter. Oh, yeah. wow. It's huge. That's so cool, man. And we, wow. And we destroyed it. Yo, God bless you, man. Okay. Uh, this one, was it? Was was this in Canada or you New York? Yeah, Where was it? Yeah. No, that was uh, Toronto, yeah. That Toronto. Toronto, yeah. Okay. T- tell me about this piece. Like, uh, you, wow. Like, <laughs> this is massive. What is this? Where, 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 is this like a... It's, called, it's a metallic uh, tower, 13.5 meter. And the idea was to, um, you know, uh, uh, Toronto is the most diverse uh, con- uh, city in the world. You know, and um, I started with the, uh, you know, the mirror of the Tower of Babel in the Bible. You know, when yeah. human beings, they wanted to build the tower to reach God and God cursed them by making them speak different languages. Yeah. So they couldn't understand each other. So they spread around the world. And actually, this is the birth of language. And Toronto is the opposite of this. So people from different countries speaking different languages. 
uh, coming to one place, Toronto, to speak English, not to build a, a tower, but to build a society. And uh, so yeah. that's... Uh, that's very deep. You, you think when people look at this, like they, they have this conversation? <laughs> no, I don't think they have that. I mean, this is a background. <laughs> if, yeah. if you want to know, like I'm sure actually there was, there was something behind it. I mean, if you look for it, you will find the story. But uh, that's the amazing. Idea was tower. Thanks, man. Oh, man. Um, you know, first of all, you guys, I want to say, you know, thank you on, on behalf of the, you know, 20, 25 people, 29 people that we have here. Um, you know, thank you so much, you guys. This is, has been, I am, I am a better person just because I spoke to all of you guys today. But I want to see if we have some questions in and, and please uh, l- let's do that. So I'm going to take it randomly. Um, but we're going to, we're going to go with uh, how, how man Jawa, Jawahir. Um, I'm not sure. She hasn't directed to anyone, but I will kind of ask you all, have you ever thought of quitting? If yes, what kept you going? Uh, let's go with you, Dusty. Have you ever thought of uh, quitting, like leaving everything and just letting go? Um, no, not really. I just jumped to another medium, you know, like try something else. But I don't nice. think... Uh, I, it it I never crossed your mind. Quitting. I love that. Um, no, the Cruz, really. what about you? I love it, man. I love it so much. <laughs> I I think we it, it could happen sometimes like you're tired you're fed up about some organization of of the way something is going but you 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 have a rest and the day after you come you come stronger and you say okay I don't give a you know and I'll do it amazing um LC you can't uh, do that anyway we're not going to allow you but I mean you know have you ever no. thought about it yeah, yeah, I thought about it a lot of time. When I was doing the project in Egypt, I felt it when uh, I was doing the thing in the I, I think when I feel it, it's a sign that I'm going to the right path. You know, so now like I, I know how to deal with it. When I really feel this feeling, I'm like, actually, I don't feel it straight away. But after like, uh, after I'm done, I'm like, I feel like this moment of doubt and wanting to quit yeah. was because it was worth it. Yeah. You know what's interesting, you guys. Again, from a sports perspective, like you know, you you talk to you you talk about people like LeBron James or Kobe Bryant, rest in peace, and they 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 say it. Their body has failed them, like they can't play the game because they're the mental halas. Like you know, like so. So with you guys, I think you know you have a you know it, it's 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 more mental in my opinion. I don't know. Um, I think it's more. Um, the, 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 yeah, I don't know. That's what I think. It is, um, I, it is mental. You, I think you have to be on the... You know, when you do art, I think, uh, I'm sure like uh, the scene that calls you, you, you could agree, but there is a reflection of your soul on the art. You know, sometimes when you're not in your right uh, mm. mindset, you create a piece, and then you come back after one month, one year, like, oh, when I was doing this, I was not on the right place of my life. I was not in the good mood. And I don't know, I think there is a, an impact you know, you can feel, you know, people won't see it, but me, I, I see it. Yeah. Um, absolutely. absolutely. Uh, uh, Mr. Q, as a LC, you made several GCC artists participate to Tour de, uh, de Paris uh, 13. Thinking about Maz, among others, are there any other projects that will bring together international artists in the loop? Why did you decide to invite or push the GCC artists to participate? Um, are there voices heard enough on the global stage tell me about this tour paris 13 uh yeah tour paris 13 actually was a project uh, organized by the gallery called gallery itinerance and i used to work with this, uh, this gallery back in the days and uh and uh and the owner of the gallery asked me you know like uh, do you know any artists from the arab world and, mm. uh, and i met maz and mariam and uh, via well, yeah. you know like years back you know and uh, in uh and hobart so we painted together and we stayed in touch you know like for for a few years, and then I was like, uh, you know, you know, it will be, it will be good actually to show because you know, many few years ago when you say like you're talking about Saudi Arabia, you have like all those cliches, you know, like uh, yes, uh, and actually bringing you know like uh, bringing girls from Saudi Arabia who are painting, who are not painting for one year but painting for several years at this time, such as you know Maryam or yeah, or, or sister at this time Khadija. Uh, I was like, I think this will break down some stereotype and. Uh, and so they, they got one apartment, you know, it was a 13 yeah. story building and uh, 11 story building and each artist had a, an apartment. So they shared an apartment together where they painted the full apartment. So I, th- I think projects like, is there anything like that in the future after obviously COVID kind of passes? Are you thinking about something similar? 
uh, me on my part, I mean, I'm, I'm not, uh, I'm not doing, me, I'm, I'm like different plan. I would love to invite a, yeah. artists to come uh, in residency in Tunisia. So we, we're working on oh, this. Oh, wow. That would be massive. Uh, Dusty, this goes uh, as well to you from Mr. Q. The Bahraini hip hop scene is becoming stronger by the year. There are several regional collaboration with other GCC countries. Is it the same street art scene as of today? Is there a regional? Um, he's saying, is it, is it more regional right now? Do you feel it's more regional when it comes to street art? Yeah, absolutely. It is, yeah. And there is, uh, like I said earlier, it's, it's really developing, like, as we speak, you know. Yeah. Like, there is an eye, like, watching the movement as we speak. So it's growing, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let me see if we have a couple of questions right here. Um, I want to try this. In. Um, what made you get into street art? What inspired you? Okay, maybe we can go talk about this. Shout out to Homan Jawahir again. Um, the Cruz, what made you get into this whole thing? What inspired you? In a, uh, you know, yeah, go ahead. It was in the early 80s when the U.S. culture hip-hop came to, to France. Paris was uh, one big place of the European graffiti start meeting. A lot of people from UK, German, Spain. And so I was a, a young kid. So I, I saw the, the, the breakers, the dancers, and mm. all that cultures came to me as something uh, I can go in. I, I was like, I'm, I'm also Portuguese. I'm first generation born in France. So I, I'm, I'm born in this kind of neighborhoods where all the immigrants went and stayed. So I was like, not supposed to, when I was young, uh, thinking about, I can go to the big culture. Yeah, you know what I mean by big culture? Yeah. This kind of, you, you, you go to the good, good schools and so on. So when this culture came to me, I saw something very powerful. So I started doing graffiti, illegal. Wow. Yeah. And then I, it opened my, my, my eyes to the natural connections about art, all kind of art. And it opened my eyes like, there's not a big culture and a small or a cheapest culture. That's yeah. only culture. So you open my eyes to to be what I am today, and, and we're very we're very lucky that that has happened because I think all of you guys the work has impacted Dusty quickly. What about you? What inspired you to get into this whole thing? Um, definitely hip hop. You know, like as a young kid, you know, I wasn't even speaking English. You know, so when I met like B boys from outside of Bahrain that came to Bahrain. And we start like uh, exchanging, you know, just movements, not even language, but yeah. that movement gave it a language, you know. So I start like understanding the guy more. So I just fell in love with it, you know. And I think at some point we all started as b boys because I know a seed used to mm. break, you know. Yeah, he, he's about else. to break right now. <laughs> <laughs> so well, yeah, thank you. to me, breaking, yeah. breaking is wow. you know. Um, but, but Fauzi LC, what about you? Uh, just to answer everybody, like you know, yeah. honestly, it was a uh, there was this uh, documentary that uh, that uh, late nineties, you know, called the Faire qui fait les anges, you know, in uh, in uh, Arte, and so uh, I was seeing like actually B boy, and uh, and there was a guy called the Don T W A Nordin uh, that I met actually four years ago, and I wow. never realized actually he came to see me. And then I never realized that that was him, you know, and I always remember him like putting his spray can in his bag and I'm like, actually, yes, this is you, man, that I used to follow back in the day, you know, like, but uh, yeah, wow. that was this actually this, this uh, documentary that I used to watch like over and over and over and over. And, uh, and then actually later on, it was a uh, calligraphy came, you know, like uh, more as a quest of identity. Yeah. But uh, that was definitely this, but I used to be a b-boy, you know, as uh, the T said, I, yeah, I was wow. really more focused in dancing than... Uh, than painting and uh, actually painting became really serious when I started painting in Arabic, you know, around end of 2004 and the uh, super serious 2007. I, yeah, I love it. I love that you guys are all patient with your work. It's really, really inspiring. You let kind of the game come to you and you evolve with it, you know, and, and it's very diverse, even lineup. Um, Sadia Abu Shar, Abu Shar is asking, um, 
I think it's a very interesting question. Uh, she's saying, is there any connection between street art and poor neighborhood? Uh, De Cruz, you want to yeah, talk about that? Yeah, and before talking about street art, we can talk about graffiti. And it's not only connection with the poor people, but it used to be the right places to, to, to paint because uh, the movement, natural movement of the cities what, that we nowadays call gentrification, it makes that old neighborhoods like are going to change. You have like big spaces that you can express mm -hmm. in a way it, that doesn't bother the people the, the same way. So, uh, and even maybe uh, popular people are more open to it sometimes, not every time. But uh, I think, yeah, that's a culture born in the street, not only by poor people, because even we're talking about um, hip hop culture, there were not only people like broken, you have also like people with like, uh, a class, higher class or middle class. But yeah, for the... I, yeah, no, I totally hear you. I mean, obviously with hip hop, yeah, it started in the, in, the, in the early 70s. It was like that. It was, you know, uh, talking. It was a voice for the voiceless. So definitely there's a connection right there. Um, LC, does do you guys agree? There's a connection between street art, graffiti, uh, and poor neighborhood? I follow what, uh, you know, what uh, Dak said. And... Uh... Mm -hmm. And and also, you know, uh, what you mentioned at the beginning of the talk, you know, how you de democratize art, you know, by uh, bringing art to the people and not people to art, you know, like uh, the fact of painting in, uh, I think people in, I would say like in the more popular neighborhood, they will be more open, you know, to receive, uh, to have like public art, you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's, that's important as well, you know, to, uh, uh, to do it, you know, because you, uh, you, you make it accessible to everybody, you know. And I think this Thanks. is a kind of responsibility that we all carry. Absolutely. Well, what do you think, Dusty? Yeah, I think it's just, it beautifies the place, it beautifies the neighborhood, it makes it look, you know, mm. you know, it's, it's a voice as well, you know, for the people. Yeah. You, you know, there are some areas in, in Lebanon, they, they don't even call it hip hop right now. They don't, they call it something else, not rap. I don't know what they're doing, but, you know, so they're trying also to evolve in that and um, and 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 kind of diversifying it. So, no, I, I, I get it. And definitely Anthony uh, De Niro, definitely hip hop is definitely is that that catalyst. Um, I'm having so much time, uh, so much fun. OK, I don't know if we have the time, but I'm having so much fun with you guys. You guys are all amazing, but uh, we're, we're nearly towards the end. So if you have a, a quick question, now is the time to raise your hand and ask it. Um, I'm going to ask each and every one of you guys. I'm going to start with the cruise. What would you um, kind of, I'm, I'm trying to see if we can um, give the younger generation some sort of a, of a message. What would you like to hear as a kid from somebody live, living all your life, going through everything that you went through right now? What difference or what statement or what would you have liked to have heard when you were younger? That's what I, I'm trying to say to them. Like one, like one question they, they ask for, for young or teenagers when they ask me, uh, that, that's your, your job? You're doing that for your own living? I say, yeah, that's my, my, my job for a few years now. And they say, oh, I, I, I will do the same. I, I tell them, maybe, but uh, what you have to understand is not to 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 to, to see that you, you're going to see or do the same as I'm doing. is more as you coming from a poor neighborhood. is more you can do what you want to do and you can follow your dreams. That's the, the, my opinion. It's like not, it's not everyone is going to be an artist, but you can be a lawyer. Even if you can come from a poor neighborhood, you can mm. be everything you want. But let your, the time and give you the strength to go there. Totally. I totally believe in that. But I think the only difference maybe is sometimes your, your surrounding doesn't really help uh, a lot for of some course. people. Like, for example, in, you know, in, in, in my case, when, when I ca called an infidel, for example, or somebody else that has uh, parents not allowing them, I think this is it just shows how hungry you are. 
really how passionate are you um, of of course it's not easy as the for for some people of course that's what i'm trying to to tell them if you struggle for that you you will follow your dream and you will become what you want love that's that the um uh, dusty what about you what would you say to a younger you younger dusty send oh, beats man. to big house let's go <laughs> i mean follow your dream you know stay ambitious you know don't don't give up even if the circumstances you know is against you mm. just push through you know and and you'll definitely reach to where you want to go mm. uh, inshallah for sure uh lc inshallah. what would you tell a younger uh, lc mashallah you're still young but i mean a younger <laughs> I think I would say the same, you know, like, uh, don't put barriers, you know, in your past, you know, like, uh, yes. uh, I think society has a tendency to always, like, shut you down, you know, make sure you, like, you, uh, you erase all the toxic people that uh, want to bring you down. I think this is that, you know, because we are made, actually, we're made to dream, and sometimes, it's like, uh, the frustration of other people are, like, uh, coming on us and uh, and blocking us, so I think this is... Uh, you know, like uh, if I follow what Dr. said, it's uh, I think it's more difficult today to be an artist than to become a lawyer or a doctor. You know, and when you look at it, there is a, there is way more artists, way more doctor, way more engineer than artists. You know, which is which is funny. And people like really think they always have this kind of uh, romanticized way of looking at us. You know, thinking that we yeah. we I think uh, being an artist today is really became being an entrepreneur. You know, like I think we. Uh, uh, we work more than anybody, you know, like we, Facts. You know, like we I, yeah. I think not only, not only work, I think you, yeah, as, as, as artists, uh, you know, brother Ali, one of my favorite rappers, you've worked with him, El Cid, uh, you know, yeah. he says that there's a certain, certain sensitivity as well as, as an artist, you're sensitive about your work in a way. And, um, but yeah, man, look, I, I can sit and talk to you guys for ages. I want to answer just Mr. Q about Le Ship Hop, my show. It is actually still there. Again, celebrating 10 years and the June. Um, still every week I am in the UAE. I moved from Jeddah to Dubai um, to cater for my son who's autistic. It's a better environment right here, but I'm still doing the show. Um, and I think for me, I'm a servant for these guys. I always say it. Uh, definitely a servant because their voices and what they do, their work, uh, you know, they're, they're all reflecting, you know, a certain culture, a certain narrative that I think more people need to be aware of. And I want to thank, you know, uh, you know, definitely um, initiatives like this um, for, for, for putting me in the same breath, wallahi, as, 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 as these incredible guys. It's just been amazing. So um, but I'm, I'm, I'm so, so, so happy. I'm blessed. I'm going to give you guys last, last few uh, seconds. Um, any last words? The Cruz, it's an honor to meet you, my brother. Your work speaks for itself. Uh, you are uh, a legend. Um, any last words you'd like to say to us and to everybody watching? I was happy to meet you guys. Every time we, it's like uh, when we paint with uh, new friends, it's the opportunity to discover, as, as you were talking about. We, we now are connected. We are like something like we have new friends in new countries yes. and inshallah we will meet one day so i'd love to i'd love I, I gotta make you hear some arabic rap because we have some amazing arab rappers with pleasure okay <laughs> dusty any last words my brother and uh, we thank you of course any last words oh uh, thank you and thank for the institute and leon sponsor for making this happen you know it's a pleasure to be with you all and looking forward for more, you know, collaborations and, you know, working on, you know, developing and pushing this culture mm. forward. Now, Absolutely. now, if I put fifty thousand dollars between you and Fozzy, would you guys battle each other rap wise? Rap? <laughs> I, I don't rap, man. I'm, I'll make the beat. <laughs> uh, he make the beat. Uh, yeah. LC, uh, any last words, my brother? No, uh, thank you, thank you, Hassan, for, for like uh, moderating this. Um, thank you, Dr. Hosen. And this it was my pleasure like to share the virtual uh, stage with you and uh, and thank you to Alliance Française and all the people who are here like tonight it was a, it was a great conversation you know and yeah, uh, yeah. Really I, I want to definitely I want to I want to thank Dakhouz I just I just feel like I'm going to Paris Dakhouz and and this if I come to Bahrain I, 
C'est vrai, c'est vrai, oui, oui, oui. Uh, je, 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 je parlais français maintenant. Et, uh, that's it, that, that's it, you guys. But, but yeah, I want to thank Celine from the team and uh, alliances, of course, uh, throughout, whether it's in the UAE, Saudi Arabia, Bahrain, um, uh, you know, just for organizing these talks. And I think it's really important. I love you guys. And that's it. I want everybody in the chat right now to put a clap if we can. Put a clap with these guys. Please help me out. Don't make me look bad. I want to see at least one clap. So, yes, clap it. Yeah, we're clapping. Mr. Q is there. Um, El Cid, um, may Allah bless you, my brother. May Allah protect you as always. You are definitely incredible. Dusty, thank you for being you. You have impacted me in a different way that you don't know about, but your production, your vibe, your energy has been amazing. Thank you. Cruz, it's an honor to have officially met you, your work, and how you spoke about your work. I think it's so important, and it's amazing to see somebody like you doing what they're doing. The passion is inspiring, and it's just like Kobe Bryant always says, job not finished. I don't think your job will ever be finished because you will always be impacting people and, and, and young guys, old guys, any human being. So it's an honor today, and uh, I'm just going to take a live picture with you guys and put the peace sign up right here, if you don't mind. Everybody right here. Yes, Elseed. Okay. <laughs> and that's it. Everybody's clapping. Ahmed, come, come. You got to say hi. This is this this is my son, Ahmed. Ahmed. Hey, viva la France. Viva la France. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's my son. Uh, love you guys. Thank you so much. And officially, uh, this is the end. And uh, signing off. And we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam. Salam. Salam.